today's topic is low voltage wiring. And in that is low voltage troubleshooting. So I've taken the liberty because I had that kind of time a minute ago to- You get time? I, no, I don't, but I had time a minute ago. <laughs> so Mikey's already given me crap about my, my, little, my little drawing. So you have a transformer that's primary voltage. And the re reason I listed it as primary voltage is depends on whether you got a 115 volt uh, transformer or a 230 volt transformer as your primary power. So that's primary. Then you have your 24 volt section, 24 volts. If you look at the thermostat, the 24 volts from the thermostat or from the transformer goes to R. Now break it down to make it easy for yourself. G is your fan, Y is your cooling, and W is your heat. You notice there's no switch for C. On the thermostat, if it calls for C, which most of the digital programmable thermostats do, C comes back to the transformer. So you have a series of switches. When your thermostat calls for cooling, then the Y will close and the G will close. G brings on the fan, Y should bring on the condensing unit. So I broke that down a little bit further. I'm gonna give this to Michael. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Yes, then. go ahead, ask me a question. How do you know which one of the wires is the, is the common on the transformer? Well, um, it's going to be the one not plus. Ah! <laughs> and a lot of manufacturers, I, I, I will do this because uh, I brought my crayons. A lot of the manufacturers will actually take the common and chassis ground it. Yes. <clears throat> <laughs> because there is no correct once you, once you ground this one and connect it to common that's the common side so so but a lot of manufacturers don't mm -hmm. actually ground their transformers on the low voltage side a lot of them don't that's just because they couldn't afford the ground wire i <clears throat> understand it's small and they, <laughs> they got cheaped out so i'm going to give you that okay because i showed this because everybody's used to seeing this on the sub base and they kind of understand what the switches are doing but that's really not the troubleshooting part. So I'm gonna give you this. I know you wanted to uh, work on something as well. Well, I kind of wanted to work on the thing <clears throat> and we're, we're, we're starting to run into an issue that we had a little while back with doing high voltage and stuff like that or higher voltage. <clears throat> and people want to reference to ground. And so you can reference to ground for certain things, but you know, I've seen in one of the calls I had past few days, a young man was reading from one side of the contactor coil to ground. And he says, I got 24 volts there. And then I go to the other side of the, the contactor coil and I got 24 volts to ground. So I got 24 volts going through the, the contactor coil. Right. And, well, no, you really don't. You have 24 volts of potential there. But you don't have a complete circuit. But you're not completing the circuit. And that's <clears throat> what I've got on the bigger board. So ah, <laughs> Brian's been busy out here. I had a couple of minutes. All right. And I even brought a contactor coil. Did out you? Sweet. You. So same principle. If you have, you see your primary voltage transformer, 24 volts. If Mikey, you know, to, to help Mikey out, I'll put a little ground in there. I need lots of help. Yeah. Well, it's all right. So there's your chassis ground. So now a lot of guys, when they're doing, when they're doing this, they talk to us and they're going, I'm reading 24 volts between R and Y, and my cooling's not coming on. Well, here's why, or at least one reason why. If you read from R to Y, and the thermostat is not closed, then you're going through the contactor coil back to common. So you would read 24 volts. <clears throat> And Mikey's going to draw the pressure switches, or he's going to try to. He's going to try to. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know the difference between these two, <clears throat> this one here is a switch that will open on pressure rise, and this one here is a switch that will open on pressure fall. So <clears throat> one of the things you can, you can do, and I've run into this pack a couple times this week, they've got 24 volts to the contactor coil. If 
if you read the contact recoil from here to here, and you're going directly to the contact recoil, and you have 24 volts here, you got bad contact recoil. Yeah. Plain and simple. Pretty much. All right. But what happens a lot of times is here's these wires out here where it connects into the unit and they want to go and read the wires here. They say, but I got 24 volts going into the contactor coil. Yep. Where you really don't have 24 volts going into the contactor coil, you have 24 volts going into the condensing unit. Yeah, you can have 24 here and still not have 24 at the contactor coil. That's these connections mm -hmm. because one of these switches could be open. Right. Or a lot of times they will put a when you're looking in the condensing unit, you're going to see a connector here where they connect one wire coming off the pressure switch and one wire coming off the, or the low pressure switch, one wire coming off the high pressure switch. And they have a connector, plastic connector, because we can get into that. We're going to get into that, too, is the difference between ohms and continuity. Continuity makes sound. Ohms is a reading. <laughs> ohms was also a really old guy. And he's a really old guy. <laughs> So when you're going from R to Y and you're reading 24 volts here, it's because you have this coil of wire, so you're getting the back feed. Common through the coil of wire coming back to Y because of that. So you can kind of see that. You're going to see, you're going to get a 24 volt reading, but this coil is not pulling in because you don't really have 24 volts here until you close this switch. Once this thermostat closes, then you'll have 24 volts on this side and this should return back to your, your common. So the reason we did this is if you're looking at the uh, furnace air handler and you're looking at that board, take your readings from Y to see on that board, and that will tell you whether or not you actually have 24 volts going out to the condensing unit. And you do the same thing. You do G to C, and that will tell you. If you wanna know if you've got your 24 volts, you go from R on the board to C on the board. And if you don't have a board at the furnace or air handler, then where the thermostat wires all connect, <laughs> there's a yeah. bundle of wire. But you should have a board in today's, in today's technology. One thing I also want to comment on, too, that I'm seeing more and more of that's driving me nuts. <clears throat> the one constant that we actually had in air conditioning for a given period of time is kind of going out the window. You know, as Brian did on the, the thermostat here, you know, red typically goes to the R terminal and Y typically goes to the yellow terminal. Yeah. <clears throat> and you got your red, you got your yellow, your white, your blue or your orange, you know, all these all these different connection yeah we used to have a standard color code that we used in the trade there it, electricity does not give a darn what the color of the wire is um, it is our standard that we created is an industry yeah um, and some engineers and uh, uh, inspectors <laughs> yeah. but someone <laughs> asked can you just go from Y to ground if, if if it's chassis grounded, if it's chassis grounded and you went from Y to ground or to, to chassis ground, if this was closed, yes, theoretically you should read 24 volts. But if it's not chassis grounded and you go from here to chassis ground, then no, it's not going to read. Yeah. One of the things I like to do is I like to start at the transformer and just read across here to see that I've got my 24 volts. <clears throat> if I've got my 24 volts. What happens if you don't have your 24 volts? Get a bigger transformer. <laughs> no, just kidding. <clears throat> That's where you go up, Mikey calls it the prim. <laughs> That's where you go to your prim side, your primary side, and see if you've got primary voltage. And again, I didn't write it down. Uh, it's either 120 or 230, or if you get into the larger equipment, it could be 460 as your primary voltage side. So always be careful, know what you're working with. Um, but if you don't have it at the transformer, check your primary, make sure that your primary has power. 
And then call Mike. What is ghost voltage or feedback? Oh God, this can be this can be a lot of fun. That doesn't that that that's not a basic that's not a basic low voltage question. That is a uh, uh, but I'll throw an answer into it. Well, well, we can with today's equipment and this communicating. You're going to see more ghost voltage stuff if guys don't wire this stuff right. Uh, again, I disagree with some of the manufacturers saying that you don't have to have shielded cable on comm wires. Well, <laughs> let, let's let's hit a couple things real, real quickly since we you opened that door. There. Yeah. Um, if I take a low voltage wire or a low voltage cable and I put it right next to some high voltage wires, you can get what's called inductive inductive coupling and capacitive coupling, which means that the two wires are now acting like a primary and a secondary on the transformer. So you can induce a voltage from the, the high voltage wire into your low voltage wire. So you, whenever you're running low voltage wires, you want to try to keep them separate from the low voltage or the, the high voltage separate from the low voltage. And if you have to cross the wires, do it at a 90 degree because now the area that's up next to it is very small. So you're going to get have very a, a lot less of that problem. Another thing that you're going to run into is grounding and bonding is critical because you want to try to get a lot of that noise going to ground. And if you're using a shielded cable, do not connect the shield on both ends. No. You just create some antenna. big ass <laughs> antenna. All right, you guys are all familiar with, I, I'm sure, 60 Hertz AC sine wave. So. I'm zooming in for this. If you run your low voltage wiring close to your high voltage wiring, this is where you start to pick up your noise, mm -hmm. which is why they tell you not to run them in the same conduit. They should be separated and yeah. separated by X amount of inches, but. Yeah, but, and now this is something we're gonna run into more and more as we get away from the standard, basically old style thermostat that were just switches. Yeah. And we get over now to more data carrying yeah. thermostats because now <clears throat> the noise becomes interpreted as something to the control yep. when it's not, you're reading noise. So, so one, of the, one of the things that we do, we recommend, the manufacturers recommend, and Mikey, can you throw me the eraser real quick? If you, you're gonna hear us tell you to, or the manufacturer, if you read the instructions, tell you when you have a communication error, first try this, turn the power off. So you shut the power off to the air handler, you shut the power off to the condensing unit, wait for the thermostat to go blank, and then reestablish power. Some of them want the condensing unit on first and then the uh, air handler or furnace on second. Some of them want it the other way around. Regardless, what happens when you do that, you shut the power off, is you've stopped this. When you reestablish the power, your high voltage comes back and your low voltage comes back you still have that signal, but you've erased the ghost voltage. You also reboot the controller, but. <laughs> and reboot the controller. <clears throat> I mean, think it, a lot of the air conditioning units nowadays, it's not the old, you know, electromechanical devices, contactors, relays, and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of data. And what happens when you boot up that device, it's loading a set of instructions in there, just like your computer does. And so if you get some garbage in there that just totally messes with the brain of this thing, just like your computer, you shut it down, you reboot it, you get a clean restart, and you can start moving forward. Or another way to make, <clears throat> make uh, all these folks that are using these smartphones, periodically, I know you shut them off and turn them back on, what you're doing is rebooting the computer in, in the phone. So that's the same thing you're doing when you shut the power off to the system and turn the power back on. If I don't get 24 volts from Y to C, what should I be looking for? Well, I think we've got to depend on the conditions. Is the thermostat calling? Well, yeah, you, <clears throat> that's, going back, that's going back to this drawing. If you, if you go from Y to C, 
and you don't get 24 volts, then you need to know whether or not you've got R to see if you have 24 volts. You check your thermostat to see if you have voltage at the thermostat between R and C. Now look and see if the actual thermostat itself is, is closing. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing you can do, that's why one of the features that, or one of the tools that we want you to have when you call us for tech support is jumper wires is at the air handler, you can now hook up a jumper from R to C, which bypasses the thermostat completely. And you'll know whether or not the, you know, it's if you jump from R to Y, sorry, I think I said C. You did. If you jump from <clears throat> R to Y, now you know you have 24 volts potential going to the condensing unit. Yeah, another, another thing that <clears throat> we've been doing a lot of, um, apartment complexes working with some contractors to do them. And one of the things we're running into are a lot of broken wires and bad thermostat sub bases and things like this. In diagnostics, I kind of like to divide and conquer. <clears throat> so I'll go to the air handler and I'll turn around and jump the R to the wire going out to the condensing unit. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say yellow because unfortunately half the time it's a red and white wire or a black and a red wire. <clears throat> so you have two wires going out there. Yes. <clears throat> But if I turn around and jump from red to the non-common wire going out to the condensing unit, if the condensing unit comes on, that tells me that from that point out is good. <clears throat> now I can turn around and I can jump from R to Y and see if it comes on. If it comes on, taking the thermostat, great. taking the thermostat taking the off thermostat the wall, off. leaving the sub base. Yep. Jumper from R to Y at the sub base. Yep. See if the condensing unit comes on. We say that like it was uh, a no-brainer, but it's not. There's there's other things that go into that as well. If you've got quite a hike to, because you can't hear the condensing unit or you're not gonna be able to go and feel the line and feel if the refrigerant's flowing in a short amount of time, you know, we say jumper from R to Y, but if you're gonna be running it for a while, make sure you turn the daggone fan on. That's yeah. R to G. <clears throat> Yeah, because if you pull the sub base, it ain't gonna help. So <laughs> <laughs> you need you need to make sure that the indoor fan is running if that compressor is going to be running for any length of time, because yeah. all of this is making sure we don't break a compressor. So yeah, yeah. But one of one of the things, you know, I've had I've, I've had the guys tell me they say, well, you know, if I go in and jump the sub base and the unit comes on. You know, would you say that it's a bad thermostat? And I said, yeah, because if I can jump the wires at the sub base and everything works, then it's a bad thermostat. Right. If you've yeah. taken the thermostat, room's 80 degrees, you've got the thermostat set at 72, and, and you've waited the five, you know, most digital stats have a five-minute time delay built into them. So if you've waited the five minutes, nothing is happening, the indoor fan comes on, and it still will not energize Y, whatever color Y is, if it still won't energize Y, then yeah, um, I would drop kick the thermostat and get another one. The reason that you jumper, take thermostat off the wall and jumper the thermostat wire is making sure that a rodent didn't chew the wires in yeah. the attic or in the basement or in the wall. Because if you go from R to Y, and nothing happens at the sub base. Now you go to R to Y at the air handler or furnace. If it works at the furnace and brings the condensing unit on, and it doesn't work when you go to the thermostat, the wire is broken somewhere between the thermostat sub base and where it landed in the air handler. A standard practice that I did, and, and I, got, I got grief from it along, uh, a lot of a lot of times I got grief from it Be, but if I only needed five wires I ran 18.8 that was pretty much my standard mm -hmm. because I didn't want to re-pull that whole thing in case one wire broke well, I don't know how many calls I've gotten of late where they're putting in a two-stage cooling unit and they're missing a wire yeah, you know, and they're like, oh, now we got to come back in and pull that wire in, you know, or they get a broken wire. You know? Yeah, it depends on whether it 
whether the thermostat wires were done under construction or whether they were done uh, as a remodel. As a remodel, you stand a pretty good chance of being able to pull new wire. As a new install, chances are that wire's tied someplace or stapled or... <laughs> well, then the Makes other, a big difference. And the other thing, when somebody hangs a picture with a 3 8 lag bolt, <laughs> yeah, go in there and I've the... got some pretty heavy mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> When troubleshooting low voltage wiring, would it be best to start at the thermostat or indoor unit? Would I take into account if the system has a board or not? Best way to approach this? I can help. Oh, gee. Go Pick ahead. me. Pick me. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I always go to the thermostat because I know the transformer because I want to make sure I got voltage to make sure. Yeah. And then I can turn around and, like I said, I can jump it at the air handler, and if I jump R to G and the fan comes on, okay, I got some good stuff going on. If I jump R to the one side of the, the wire going out to the condensing unit and it comes on, okay, great. Yeah. So I can kind of work, work my way back. Now, when you get into heat pumps, it's a little bit different animal <clears throat> because on the, the defrost control board, a lot of times you'll have terminals for your low pressure switch your high pressure switch, a defrost thermostat, you know, and God knows what else they want to put in there. So you've got all those points that you can go look at. And a real simple way to kind of kind of bypass that is look at Y in and Y out. If you jump across that and it comes on, okay, my issue is in the board. And it's not necessarily a bad board. Right. It just means that something is telling the board, hey, don't run the compressor because I got something going on. Right. I've seen a couple times where they've had this problem and we get the phone call that they've replaced two or three boards and I ask them if they've checked the temperature sensors, the thermistors, and they go, no. So they go and check the thermistor and they got a shorter or an open thermistor and that's what's telling the board not to let the compressor come on. Right, right. So, so here's, here's Brian's Troubleshooting 101. Oh, geez, let me get a pencil. Residential call. I always ask the customer when I walk in, where's the thermostat? So they'll, they'll take us to the thermostat. When you get to the thermostat, you get to turn the fan switch to on. You get to make sure that the machine is calling for cooling, provided this is a no cool call. So you go to the thermostat, you turn the fan switch from auto to on. Then you take and turn the, the thermostat down, knowing that it's going to be calling for cooling. The next question you have is where's the air handler? Where's the furnace? whatever. Now you go to that point. I didn't take any tools out. All I did was make sure the thermostat was turned down, turned on, and the fan was running. Now I went to the air, air handler, which is your uh, control voltage source. And now I can check for my primary voltage. I can make sure the transformers got 24 volts. So to answer that gentleman's question a little bit more specific, once I saw that everything was working at the air handler, knowing that I turned the thermostat down, now I can check my voltages going to the, to the thermostat. I can check my voltages coming back from the thermostat. I can jumper and see if the condensing unit will run. You can do a lot of troubleshooting right there at the furnace or air handler. Pretty much you divided and conquered. Yep. <clears throat> yep. And it also, going back to earlier, which brought us into this whole control piece, <laughs> is remember when you're taking the step from the residential light commercial and you're going to that train Saha, OMG, open up the doors, relays, wires, all the same color. Um, start at the same point, guys. Turn the thermostat on, turn the fan switch on, open up that big panel, ignore all the black wires, ignore all the gray relays, find the damn transformer, and see if you have primary voltage, see if you've got secondary voltage. <laughs> and go from there. <laughs> one, one, one of the things that Brian has left out is that on the bigger units, a lot of the wires typically go to terminal strips. Yeah. And they are very nicely numbered. So instead of having to go trace this wire in that bundle of black wires, I can go TB11 to TB111. I got my 120 volts. So I can, I can go in and, and troubleshoot that way. 
And reading the wiring diagram is super helpful. Yeah. <laughs> Having <laughs> a wiring diagram to read is super helpful. Hey, you can find that. <laughs> <laughs> on the blue on app. <laughs> nice. How do you bypass the circuit board to get a unit up and running while waiting on a circuit board? That's kind of a, you, you got to be really, really careful with that because number one, you need to determine whether or not you're jumping out an operating control or a safety control. And I don't have a problem jumping out safety controls like people want to jump out high pressure switches. Great, jump out the high pressure switch, but make sure you've got your gauges on there to see what's going on. And you don't jump it out on a permanent basis. No. You jump it out just for a moment to see if that's if that's your problem. Yeah. Um, some operating controls, that we, I had one the other day where the guy was short of wire and it was in a hospital and they, what do you Leave the fan on all the time and turn around and stage your first stage and second stage cooling until you get the other wires pulled. But you never want to jump out safeties other than for just real quick test. Testing purposes only. Yeah. Do not walk away. No. Ever walk away. It is never okay to walk away from somebody's unit with a safety jumper. Uh, you can't even go to lunch. Yeah. It's, it's just, like, oh, I'm just going to go out to my truck and get something and I'll be right back. No. No. Um, no, you no, you can't do that. Uh, shut the machine off, go get what you want out of the truck, come back. You need to watch the machine the whole entire time you've got some kind of a safety jump. It's well, let's 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 throw in a kind of a qualifier here. Guys, we're working with high voltage, we're working with high pressure, and these things can hurt you. Okay? They can hurt you. And the pressures and things can change real quickly. Yeah. So when you start bypassing things, jumping things out. Like I said, with the high pressure, I've got gauges on it. I want to know where that high pressure is because I don't want that thing coming on if I got 600 pounds of pressure in there. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't want that happening. So whenever you're doing things, be real careful guys because you know the stupid mistakes that we make, okay, we learn from them, we can laugh at them on down the road and everything else, but if you get hurt, or worse, you know, it's it's not funny. I mean, can't go backwards. No, I, I, we 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 joke and kid with each other when when each other makes a mistake and things like that. But your safety is the most important things, guys. It really is. Right. So now, if you're if you're working, because you, you, this the statement was a board, and machines have several boards. So if it's the indoor board, and you're just trying to get the fan to come on, um, that's Again, uh, relays and, and knowing what you're wiring. Condensing unit with the defrost board, defrost board died or the sensors aren't working. You need to get this thing back up and running even if it's overnight. Always tie in your safeties, but you're, re you're gonna rewire the whole machine. Um, you're not gonna have defrost if it's in the winter time, you know, and you're trying to get these people heat uh, they're going to have to be that person that shuts the machine off uh, or switches it into air conditioning. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things that you have to do. Um, but it's not just as easy as taking the thermostat wire and connecting it to the contactor, uh, not on a, on a defrost board, because you gotta, you got to jump out, make sure that the outdoor fan motor runs, that your pressure switches are all there. Uh, obviously, if the board's bad, the temp sensors uh, aren't going to aren't going to function, and that's not going to do any. That's not not going to do anything in your in your bypass moves. Uh, but you may have to hook up relays. To uh, you, you can do it, but just be aware and kind of ask yourself, what is this board doing? And if I bypass this, what are the consequences that right. can occur? Because to turn around and bypass a board. You know, it's 95, 100 degrees outside, you know, and it's gonna get down to 85 at night. To turn around and bypass a defrost control board, I could care less. Right. Because I don't have to worry about flooding back or tearing up the compressor or turning the condensing unit into a block of ice. I'm good with that. <clears throat> but if you need the defrost and everything else, it's not a good idea because you went from now replacing a, a $500 board to replacing a two or $3,000 compressor. And that gets kind of hard to, hard to swallow sometimes. <clears throat> so just 
ask yourself that, that, that question. If, and if worst comes to worst, there's this really cool red button on the app. It takes you right straight to Brian. <laughs> I help you, Brian. I help you. I appreciate that, Mike. I appreciate that. So on the on that, if the if the thermostat is now calling for cooling, that means this switch is closed. If we have a break on the common, again, you're gonna read 24 volts between here and here, but you're not gonna read 24 volts between here and here because the common is broke. How does the common get broke? If it's a split system, again, it could be a rodent issue. Mm -hmm. It could be the people have got a gardener and somebody hit it with a weed wagger. <laughs> It could be where they've connected the condensing unit uh, wires to the thermostat wire. I've seen it um, time and time again where it's actually corroded in the wire nut mm -hmm. and gives you a bad connection. Uh, we were talking earlier about this connection down here. If this is all good and I have 24 volts, and I don't get my 24 volts here, and you check be, your, your uh, low pressure, and you check your high pressure, and you find out, because the guys will check those on continuity to where you hear the tone, that only means that there is some resistance here. It doesn't tell you what the resistance is. Mm -hmm. So I have guys go from this point to this point, and I want you to use ohms, not continuity. And if you have 50 ohms between here and here, that's no good. This should be more like 0.5 or 0.05 resistance. If you're at 0.5, the resistance is too high and you're not going to get good 24 volts to the contactor coil. Look at this connection and if need be, I mean they should be just stake-ons on there, but if you look at that connection and you take it apart and now re-ohm your switches and you find this down at 0 0.5 and this is at 0 0.5 going from here to here should be 0 0.5. So eliminate that connection, strip the wire back, use a wire nut, tape it off real good, and, and get that back down to where it's a 0 0.5 and not a 0 0.5. Yeah. <clears throat> Brian, Brian just attacked this one with, with ohms or, or continuity. I like voltage. <clears throat> so if I turn around and go over here and hook my, my, my common leg of my multimeter, that would be the black one. And I go <laughs> to here, and I've got 24 volts. The red one. <clears throat> now I can come down here, I've still got 24 volts. I come here, I still got 24 volts. I get up here, I got 24 volts. I go to the other side, and now I've got zero. I just found when my open is at. So you can always use, there are gonna be things that you can't see unless the equipment's powered up. Right. And so if you're powering it down and trying to read continuity, it doesn't always work. So another way to do it, like I say, is just to put your alligator clamp on here from your common leg and put it on your appropriate voltage and just go boom, 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 boom. Oh, I lost it there. And it'll get you to where, to where you're going without having to power down the unit. Different people have different methods of troubleshooting. And I'm not gonna critique somebody else's because if it works for them, that's great. Yeah, and guys, you don't have to be at the switches. If you look at these, if you look at the boards, the defrost boards, the low pressure and high pressure switches come back to the terminals on the board. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like Mike is saying, I mean, I can already visualize where he's at working on a machine, the, the train uh, Saha that I was mm -hmm. talking to. Uh, everything comes back into the control panel, you know, and you can and you can do tests hot. Um, you're not going to be able to reach in to a five ton condensing unit and take voltage readings at the actual pressure switches.
because you know you can't get past the running condenser fan motor unless you're real fast. <laughs> It'd be super fast. Super fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, guys, um, get your phones. Update double, the app. Double check. You had your phone on auto update. Go into the forum, ask your questions, help other techs out, post some memes, have a good time. Send in your comments, send in your notes. Tell us what topics you would like us to cover on uh, Buckle Up with Mike and Brian. And I'm not Brian. <laughs> or I'm not Mike. That's my. <laughs> I, I screwed that one Whoa. up. Yeah, yeah. Peace. Peace.